Let me start by saying I'm not an expert at engraving, and I'm actually hoping that my lack of experience in this area will allow me to provide more valuable information to others like, like me that are just getting started. Um, when I started out, I found there were a lot of videos out there that were a little overwhelming because the presenter was providing far more information than I really needed to get started. And that's really my purpose here. I want to help novices avoid frustration by providing an overview that gives you only what you need to know to get started. Once you've tried a few examples and feel comfortable with the process, I think you'll find it much easier to digest some of the more in-depth videos that are available. The hardware I have is an Affair Laser 1. The machine comes well packed and almost entirely assembled, but more on that shortly. There are many items, such as shields for the laser and glasses to protect your eyes. Even low power lasers can be dangerous, so take your safety seriously. The work area is only 7 inches by 7 inches, but I think that's large enough to do everything that I'm considering. The unit typically comes with only one head, so you'll have to know about them in order to choose the one that's best for you. The one on the left is a low power laser suitable for engraving on materials like paper, wood, or leather. It is powerful enough to cut through heavy paper stock though, so you can also make stencils or cut out images. It has a very thin beam, so you get far more detailed engravings than possible with the more powerful lasers. The one on the right is powerful enough to cut through thin wood, but its larger beam makes it more difficult to get real detail with engravings. The one in the middle is a good compromise. It doesn't cut as well as the one on the right, and it doesn't have nearly the detail as the one on the left. But if you can only buy one head and you need to do cutting and engraving, this could be a good choice for you. In this video, I'm using the low power laser because at least for the projects I have in mind, detail is more important. The hardware is relatively simple. There are only two motors, one motor underneath that moves this arm forward and backward, and then another motor on top that has a belt that moves the head from left to right. More expensive engravers have another platform like this on this side that allows it to support. I was a little worried that it wouldn't have enough support, but there's not all that much weight and everything seems to be fine when it works like that. Um, the accuracy and everything seems to be fine. I did have one alignment problem. I assume it happened during, during shipping. But the head itself needs to stay the same height all the time. And this end of the arm was a little bit lower than back here. So you loosen two screws on this side and this side, adjust the arm to get the right height, tighten it back up. Took a couple tries to get it perfect, but once you have it, then everything is level and it works well. No matter where the head is, when you turn the power on, it should move to its home position. When I, f if, when I first got my unit, every time it tried to home, it would keep ratcheting trying to get to the spot because the limit switches, especially the one on the bottom, was not being hit, so it didn't know that it had reached the home position. Turned out that the there's a little stop in there, you just loosen the screw and you can adjust it and allow it to get far enough to do the switch. Um, again, I'm assuming that happened during shipping, but um, if you have any trouble with it homing, you might check that. These are the two pieces of software recommended for the Laser 1. Both of these packages seem to have advantages and disadvantages 
but there are a few points that are important for beginners to know. Laser GRBL is much easier to get started with because it doesn't offer as many options, so it's not nearly as intimidating. The best thing is that most people new to engraving will not need a bunch of options anyway. Lightburn is a very powerful tool, but it seems to me that most of the extra features would be best used by someone that wants to start an engraving business. If, for example, you want to make personalized leather keychains, um, where the laser cuts out the tag and engraves the name on it all in one operation, then Lightburn is probably best. You could make many of the same operations with Laser GRBL, but it could take more steps. If you're only making a couple items, this is no big deal. If you want to set up a system that can produce multiple tags without human intervention, then it's probably easier with Lightburn. At least for me, Laser GRBL is the best choice but I had a hard time figuring that out because I had trouble finding laser GRBL tutorials designed specifically for novice users. A major goal for this video is to help you get started quickly with laser GRBL. All right, let's get an overview of the system. The COM port and VOD rate will automatically be set when you connect with the engraver. The buttons at the bottom here when you're connected allow you to move the head around and these buttons have some special functions for us. This one for example right here allows you to set a new home position. That allows you to position where your object is going to be drawn on the platform with the engraver. If we were to open a file pressing this button this is the one we're going to be using today, so let's open that up. We have a variety of different spots here we can use. You can set the brightness, the contrast, different things in this point to get rid of any grayscales or to add grayscales, depending on what you need. The white cap allows you to simply get rid of some areas. For instance, we're starting to see some gray stuff come on here that we don't want. Here we've got the entire screen is gray. The laser would have to draw all that if you had it. So one of the things we'll do is we'll set that up the way we want it. We have the line-to-line -line tracing. In that case, what happens is the laser will move across the screen back and forth and every time it gets over a spot that's supposed to be a black dot, the laser will pulse on. We also have a vectorized system. This is only the edges. When this is on, the laser will actually trace up and down through these things and go around and draw all the spots in the sees a line. With this mode, you can't get any grayscales because all you have is edges. When we're doing the grayscale area, and if we were to add a little bit in here someplace to get a little bit of gray like we're having here, the grayscales will either be done by having the laser control its amplitude, control its intensity, or it can be used grayscales by dithering. And if we look at the dithering here, we can select that option. What we get is, instead of a gray area here, we get a bunch of little dots. And the more dots you have in an area, the darker it will be. Now the system will do all this automatically depending on where we set up. Once we've got all that set, that is the brightness, contrast, and so on, and which way we want it to draw, then we go in here and we can set the speed that it moves. We can also select the the power, whether we want it to be a constant power or whether we want it to be a dynamic power, that way the system will automatically adjust its intensity to create greater level areas. When we get all that done, we just hit create to create the system and then we will press the button to run the program. All right, now we're ready to start burning our images. I'm going to use this piece of cardboard for all these images to make it easy. You'll notice that I've got some lines on the cardboard. We're going to draw the image 
in each of these different boxes using different techniques, such as the dithering, for example, or the vectors. And then we're going to be able to compare them all at the end. And we'll also do one on wood at the end just to compare how it works with the cardboard. Um, the cardboard, I found, works really nice to be able to get a lot of test systems when you're first playing around rather than try to burn up a lot of pieces of wood. So what we're going to do, I've already set the head up so that it's the right size from the cardboard because the cardboard is a little bit above the typical work surface that I had before. Now we're ready to actually start burning our first system. All right, let's do our first engraving. What we're going to do is we're going to go in and choose a file by pushing this button. We're going to get a cup of tea drawing. I've already set it up in the vector mode. We've got the proper contrast and so forth. We go over to the next window. We got it on constant power, and we got it on 1,500 um, millimeters per minute. Not terribly fast, but let's see how it does. We create the program. The blue line is showing where the laser is going to start. It's going to go out. It's going to start tracing all these things around. All we have to do then is connect. Once we're connected, we can use these buttons to move our head around, which I've already done and pushed it, put it on the platform at a spot that I want the drawing to take place. We can click this button, which tells us that that's going to be the new beginning spot. Otherwise, it'll always go back to the original homing spot and use that as the beginning. We can turn the laser on here on a very low intensity, but it allows you to see where it's going to start and so on. Or you can even make it blink or even have it draw a frame around on, on your platform around where the drawing is going to be. So all we have to do then, now that that's all set up because I've already set up all these buttons, you just have to come in here and press Run Program and it will begin to run, and we'll take a look at that as we go. So all we have to do is press this green button to run the program. And what you see here is the image is way too light. So we're going to change some of our settings to show how we can make that darker. Notice it is very fine, nice resolution, but just not dark enough. All right, we know from looking at, at the output from the laser that it was a little too light. So what we need to do is either increase the intensity of the laser or to slow down the head so that it has time to burn more as it goes. So we need to open up those dialog boxes again. We can do that here. We go to the file, but instead of opening the file, we reload the last file. And that pops up our dialog boxes again. Everything here is going to be the same. If we look here, our power is at 900, which is 90%. So we really can't get much more power there. But we can slow down the speed. Let's slow down the speed to 750. That's half. Should make it a lot darker. Tell it to create the file. And then run our program again and see what happens. 
Now that the engraving is finished, let's take a look. Notice how much darker the second image is. Now I did this intentionally because I wanted you to see that whenever you're doing something like this, you need to start practicing with different things. And in fact, before you ever starting, start trying to do something that, that is something you really want to make, you should do a lot of practice using cardboard like we're doing here so you can see what's going on. All right, we've seen how the vectors work. Let's do some new settings. We'll open up the dialogs again. So in this case, let's do line to line tracing. You notice since we had the contrast and everything set up, we've got a lot of gray. We move on to next. And we're going to set this to 1500. We've got our power at constant power. We got it at 90%. Create that dialog. Connect to the machine and we run it again. Now notice this is what it should look like. We're seeing as it's doing this little raster, you see all these little lines, but some of these lines are lighter. It'll automatically try to do that by moving a little faster. Let's see what happens. Now this process actually took much longer than the vector because instead of just tracing the lines that exist in the, in the drawing, remember it went along and did every line side by side. So it's covering a lot more area. Now notice that this is much, much darker. So if this is the method you want to use, you might want to lighten it down, or maybe it's the darkness that you want. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to take it and try to put it on to let the laser, instead of being on it full blast all the time, we're going to let it automatically raise and lower the amplitudes of the, of the beam itself, its intensity, and put the next drawing over there and see what happens. Let's change our settings again now and get another drawing so we can compare it to some of the things that's happening. We go to File, bring up the dialog boxes again. We're going to leave it on the line to line tracing. But this time, instead of having a constant power, we're going to give it dynamic power, allowing it to change its intensity. We create that. We connect with the machine, run the program, and let's take a look at what it does. All right, let's see how that did. I think it's maybe a little bit clearer. The lines aren't quite as as dark and wide as they are here, so it's a little bit more accuracy. But a lot of it depends on your preference. Remember, in each of these, if it's a little too dark, you can either speed the laser up just a little bit, or you can decrease the intensity. Those are all parameters that we've talked about how to do. All right, let's try one more where we use dithering. All right, let's try to do another grayscale type. In this case, we'll bring the file back up again. But instead of doing the line-to-line -line tracing, which has some areas that are gray, as you see here, we're going to tell it that we want to do one bit bigger. In this case, there's just lots of tiny dots. Notice there's so many dots up here that it looks much darker than this area. Some areas are in between depending on how many dots it makes. The system will do that all automatically. So we'll go to next. In this case, we want to keep it all the same power because we want every dot to be dark. We just want more or less of them. So we'll create that. I've already positioned ahead like I had before. So all we have to do is 
run the program, and then take a look at what the output will be. All right, let's see how that did. I think the, the image is much clearer there, and the dots really make a nice grayscale coming in. All right, now that we've got something that we like, because I do like that one the best, just personal preference, what we're going to do is we're going to try to put that on a piece of wood. Let's see how that works. All right, that looked pretty good on the cardboard. Let's try to do this exact picture, now that we've found out that this is the way we want it to be. Let's try to put this on some wood. So I put a little piece of wood on the screen, I've positioned the head, I've got everything all set up exactly where I want it to be. We're going to go in and change this just a little. We're still going to keep it on dithering. But over here we're going to go to 600 because we want to slow it way down. It's going to be harder to burn the wood than it is to burn the cardboard. We create that program. We come over, connect, run the program, and we'll come back shortly and see how it looks. All right, let's see how that worked. You got a fairly nice image, although I don't think it's quite as clear as I would like. It's got a really nice grayscale, so depending on what you want it to do, it could be perfect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set up and do one without the grayscale, and then we'll put them all together and take a look at them. Because uh, even though this looked better on the cardboard, I didn't think it looked better on the wood. But that just gives you some some emphasis on why you have to practice with different ones and try different techniques and different amount of power and so forth to find what you really need for any project that you're doing. Here we have all the images. That's five images on cardboard and two on wood. And they're all labeled so that you can remember which one came with what. The whole idea here is that you can use an exercise like this to learn how to do your own testing. Because you'll have to do that because burning on leather versus burning on wood will require totally different settings. Even two different kinds of wood. A darker wood will burn easier because it doesn't reflect as much light, so it absorbs it and burns easier. I hope this has helped you see all the different things you need to do to start learning about engraving. I know it's the way I went through it, and I've got a lot to learn, but I hope it's been something that you'll enjoy.